What's up, VC? This is a thread response, contest response to um, Travis's 100 Subs video, favorite double albums. First of all, Travis, congratulations on the 100 subscribers. It's good stuff. It means you're making good videos and people are digging what you're doing and you're in this crazy thing called the VC. It's, a, I guess, a rite of passage. I hit 100 subscribers. I haven't done anything yet. Um, I'm thinking of doing it at 200. But either way, uh, I dig your videos. You and I have corresponded, obviously. If you know what's up. So if I if I had to think seriously, long and hard, which I did, actually, uh, about my my one favorite double album. I thought about showing several. Thought about showing some of the ones that people have already shown, uh, but you know, if I if I had to think about it, pick like one album would be XTC's English Settlement. This was uh, released in 1982 on Virgin Records. Nice embossed uh, cover. Kind of see it there. My copy's a little. It's, it's seen better days, but it's such a solid. Cover. It's you know it's textured kind of like canvas a little bit. Um, it's just such a solid cover that it really isn't an issue. Or, um, this album, you know, for a band who released white music and go to, they were just these nervy, unhinged. Not even I you know I don't even really like those albums. Uh, I don't I don't think they were that great. Uh, they released these albums that were, you know, new wave and, and tense. Followed it up with Black Sea, which kind of gave some hints as to what was what was happening here. And I have a lot of feelings about this record, so I'm going to try and not make this an incoherent mess, nor I'm, gonna, I'm not going to try and make it too long. Um, this is. A snapshot of that band, that nervy, crazy band coming into their own and becoming the band that would, you know, go on to produce Skylarking and, you know, Oranges and Lemons, Apple Venus 1 and 2. You know, this, this captures a wonderful moment in the songwriting development of Andy Partridge and Colin Boulding. Andy Partridge had kind of befriended the 12 string acoustic guitar on this and just the combination of frantic uh, frantic angular sort of angular that's such like a non music critic word but angular guitars with that are kind of on these softer acoustic driven songs just the combination of these ballads with the frantic energy and hooks on hooks on hooks like this album is catchy and that's if, if something could be that musically adventurous and also be this catchy, I mean, I I can't give it enough props for doing so. And in some ways, uh, in that sense, this album is kind of a precursor to one of my favorite bands, Blur, who I don't have any vinyl of, sadly. However, you know, they kind of would explore the same themes. Graham Coxon would definitely be influenced by Andy Partridge guitar. And, you know, call it molding. He writes the first two songs on here, Runaways and Ball and Chain, and they're they're wonderful ways to start this album. His bass playing is incredible. You know, I, I think he rivals a lot of bass players of the eighties in that his playing is just incredibly melodic. I mean I could talk a lot about pretty much all of these songs. Uh, Melt the Guns, still relevant today, you know. Uh, Down in the co Cockpit, a wonderful up-tempo song about feminism. All of a sudden it's too late is a wonderful, wonderful song. Beautiful by Andy Partridge. Uh, Terry Chambers, actually, this was his last, he's the drummer, this was his last album with the band, unfortunately, because I, I think... His drumming on this album is incredible, but uh, XTC had decided to stop touring because of Andy Partridge's debilitating stage fright, and Terry Chambers kind of just relegated to the role of a session musician, so he, you know, couldn't pay his bills. I don't know why he couldn't just be the session musician. 
I mean, he showed up on the next album a little bit, but, uh, you know, he decided that it just was not, wasn't a good idea for him. It shows some of the inner sleeves. Very, very nicely done. This is one of the first records I bought when I started getting back into records, and I originally purchased the US 1LP version, which is like, what's the point? But I didn't realize that uh, when I grabbed it that it was going to be missing all these songs. Very cool labels on here. But I bought the 1LP, finally eventually found the 2LP, luckily, uh, I think 2011 or something. But the 1LP is just castrated, it doesn't feature the half the album basically. I don't know why they released it like that. I love it. I love it. I don't know. That's it. It's XTC, English Settlement, one of my favorite bands. With an incredibly strong discography, I think this is one of their finest moments caught to tape. You know, with XTC, you could argue that a lot of their albums were their best, and while I love every single one of their albums, this is the one I listened to in high school. I mean, I listened to plenty of bad music in high school, um, but this was, but this is, I listened to this record the most. Uh, I was huge in XTC in high school. It was like XTC and Weezer. You know, this wasn't very cool to listen to in high school. I'm not sure if it's very cool to listen to now. Who cares? It's excellent. Every bit of this album, every nook and cranny, is considered and just well played and enjoyable. Can't say enough. That's that's it. I'm gonna do real quick honorable mention. Speaker box. The Love Below by Outcast. This album. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Honorable mention. Had to show it. And that's it. Travis, once again, congrats, man. I'll be talking to you soon. And glad I got a chance to do the video. Later.